In this lecture, we're going to go into a little more detail about what, the, what comprises the thick filaments, the myosin, and then what comprises the thin filaments, the actin, tropomyosin, and the troponin. And then we'll specifically talk about the striations that you see in a microscopic view of muscle fibers. And then we will just briefly touch on the sliding filament theory of contraction, and we'll go into more detail of that next week. So um, you can go into the, uh, I've actually uploaded this video as well, um, this little animation that's going to help you to visualize exactly how all this stuff works and kind of keep everything in perspective, hopefully. When we take a look at a muscle fiber, we are looking, in, if we look at it at a microscopic level, it is comprised of thick filaments and thin filaments. So let's take a look at these pictures down here. I think these are going to help us. Actually, let me take a closer look here. Uh, thick filament here. Let's take a look at the thick filament first. Thick filaments contain myosin. And myosin uh, contains two globular heads that are twins with each other. And these, uh, the heads themselves have an actin binding site and they have an ATP binding site and the polypeptide chain tail actually kind of bundles together and bundles about uh, 300 of these things together into one thick filament. Um, the heads themselves are going to be active during a contraction and they form cross bridges with the next thing we're going to discuss which is the actin. So thin filaments, if we take a closer look at thin filaments, it's not just actin, but it's actually three total of proteins here. So thin filaments, oftentimes depicted in blue, thick filaments are usually in red, thin filaments are usually depicted in, in blue. Um, thin filaments contain actin. Actin has this active zone or active site that allows for the binding of the myosin head. And um, the actin strings together to make this alpha helix, and it twists around itself. Um, and then if you look closely, the actin, actually let's take a closer look here, the actin's active zones are blocked by this other protein called a tropomyosin. Tropomyosin is just kind of a long ribbon of a protein, um, and it spirals around the active core of actin. So this blocks actin's active sites, and then, you know, if we follow this through to its logical conclusion, myosin heads cannot bind as long as this blockade of tropomyosin is in place. So that's where we turn to our fourth protein, which is troponin. Troponin actually has three subunits. It's usually drawn with actual three subunits on it. One of the subunits will bind directly to actin, one of the subunits will bind directly to tropomyosin, the tropomyosin ribbon. And then one of the uh, subunits is a binding site for calcium. And at the end of the day, when calcium binds to troponin, it swings the tropomyosin out of the way and opens up the active sites of actin, or those active zones, and allows the, uh, the uh, myosin heads to bind. So at the end of the day, remember that calcium is very special. Calcium is our signaling molecule. It causes things to happen, or it's our signaling ion. It causes things to happen. And in this case, what it's specifically causing to happen at the end of the day is for the tropomyosin blockade to be removed and for the myosin heads to bind. Uh, and then I will say that the action of these two things against each other, if we take a look at this picture here, what we'll notice is that the actin or the thin filaments line up with the heads sticking out of those those myosin heads sticking out of the thick filaments and what will happen is that the the heads here will bind to the active sites and will tug on the actin filament to bring it inward to the middle of this larger structure called a sarcomere which we'll discuss in just a moment so it's the heads of the myosin binding to the active zones of the actin that start to move everything and actually cause, at the microscopic level, they cause a muscle contraction. Uh, this is the nice transmission electron micrograph of thick filaments, thin filaments. You can actually see the myosin heads forming these what we call cross bridges and attaching directly to the actin active zones. 
All right, so what comprises these striations? When we look at uh, muscle fibers, you know, one of the things that actually uh, characterizes skeletal muscle fibers is the fact that they have these striations. Now, the dark bands here, I'm going to tell you that these dark bands here are called um, A bands, and the light portion in between them, which you'll notice, if you look very closely, you'll notice there's actually a stripe down the center, but the light portions between them are called I bands. So just remember dark A bands and light I bands. Now let's take a close look at what that actually is. Here we're looking at an entire sarcomere, and I'll describe that in a moment. But if we look at what a, uh, a dark, what the dark A band is, it's actually made of thick filaments that are kind of resting right in the center of everything. Up here is a nice TEM showing all those thick uh, filaments stacked on top of each other, perfectly aligned with one another, and allowing you to, to visualize what looks like a stripe. But if you look at it very closely, it's just the stacking of these thick filaments on top of each other. Now, so that is the A band. The I band is simply the space in between them. The I band is the space in between the thick filaments. And again, if you look very closely at an I band, it's not entirely dark, it's not entirely light, it's actually got a little dark stripe down the center. And that dark stripe is the Z disc. So let's describe each of these things in turn. There is a Z disc that is in the center of the I bands, and the Z disc. Um, uh, is in the center of the I-bands. And what you'll notice is that it's actually an attachment point for the actin filaments. I would suggest going ahead and drawing a simplified version of this entire structure in your notebook. Um, and uh, what you're actually drawing then is a sarcomere. The sarcomere can be defined as the space between z disks so z disk to z disk that's a sarcomere. Additionally, a sarcomere can be defined as a thick filament in the middle and two thin filaments flanked on either side. Um, and additionally, and probably the most useful definition of a sarcomere, is that it is the contractile unit of a muscle. At the microscopic level, what's actually shortening when a muscle contracts is the sarcomere. The sarcomere is shortening. Um, okay, so we've defined A-bands as being the area that you see these thick, thick, um, these thick filaments, these myosin filaments. The I-band as the space between them. The Z-disc is this attachment point for the actin, and it's right in the center of the I-bands. The sarcomere has three definitions, if you will. The only part, the only structure I still want you to look at is the H zone. The H zone, as you'll notice here, is the central part that is, you'll notice the actin filaments do not come all the way across. There's like a space in between there. That, in fact, is the H zone. And the H zone also can be defined as the central part of the thick filament. So it's right in the middle of the A band. Now, what we're looking at, and again, take a look at the animation that I've uploaded as well, because this will help you sort of, you know, really visualize the stuff and really take a look at the stuff. It's important to understand all the details of this at a microscopic level, and then the details of the physiology will be a lot easier to comprehend next week. If you look at these two pictures, here we have a fully relaxed sarcomere. Here we have a fully contracted sarcomere. It can actually contract more than this. I've seen them contract more than this. Um, but it's, it's fairly well contracted. And what we'll notice here is that the sarcomere has shortened. Remember, we define the sarcomere as Z-disc to Z-disc. So here we have a Z-disc over here and here. And what you'll notice is that as the muscle contracts, the Z-discs have come closer together. Additionally, the H-zone has virtually disappeared. Think about what the H-zone is. The H-zone is the space between the ends of the, the uh, um, thin filaments. Since the thin filaments are much closer to each other, there basically is no H zone in this picture. The A band has not changed its uh, shape at all. The I bands have gotten shorter, have gotten shorter. So take a close look at that and convince yourself that, that is true and why that is true. Um, and there's a few things and there's a few structures here we have not actually devi defined. I wouldn't worry about them too much. There is an M line in the middle of the H zone. There are elastin filaments. 
that attach the thick filaments to the Z-discs, but we're not really discussing those. We should, you, know, you may want to know that they're there. All these things kind of help to stabilize everything in the center, but what we're really concentrating, uh, or they, they help to stabilize everything to where they're supposed to go, but we're, what we're really concentrating on is how the thin filaments move past the thick filaments. And that is called the sliding filament theory of contraction, which is where during a contraction, the thin filaments slide past the thick ones to overlap and they can literally this is not fully contracted even though this says it's fully contracted this is not fully contracted actin filaments can actually overlap each other entirely here we're actually having them kind of meet in the middle but they can actually slide past one another the z discs can literally meet the ends of this of the uh, myosin filaments or the thick filaments um, they can come very close to the ends of the thick filaments if a contract if a muscle is really really fully contracted. Um, but anyway, when when many of these things slide simultaneously, this additive effect of all of these things allows the entire muscle to shorten and then cause a contraction. Now. Skipping ahead, we're not quite respond. We're not quite at this point yet, but uh, I do want to connect the two lessons here. We're talking about microscopic anatomy here, but you have to understand how the physiology connects. Um, the the reason why these thin filaments have slid into the center is that all of these little myosin heads have stuck up into those active zones and have pulled and tugged the actin into the center of the H zone. So take some time with these pictures, take a look at the animation, make sure that you really understand all of these details. It's, it's very detailed, and it can be very confusing, but I think the more that you look at this and the more you study it, the more it's going to start to make sense to you. So make sure you take your time with this lesson. It's going to help you a lot next week, trust me.